Hello there, Eddie Mercado here with BloodyElbow.com, and today I will be speaking with the UFC's number 12 lightweight, Benil Dariush, as he is set to face Evan Dunham at UFC 216 on October 7th. So let's give Benil a call and find out what he's been up to since his last fight, find out his thoughts on veteran opponent Evan Dunham, and maybe what he has in store for UFC 216. Hello? Ah, Mr. Benil Dariush, how are you doing, sir? Good, but how's everything? Ah, life is well, life is well. So yeah, you're 14 and 3 right now in your mixed martial arts journey, headed to UFC 216, going down October 7th, facing a veteran in Evan Dunham. What are your thoughts on uh, heading back to UFC? Uh, glad to be back. I've been, uh, I've been away for a while. I like to stay active, and uh, it's, it's been a bit too long. Yeah, it's been a little bit. Your last outing, it was, uh, it ended abruptly. You, you were really taking it to them, and you know, it, it just kind of, it all fell apart. It looked like you were, you were trying to get a takedown off of a jab, and Edson Barbosa threw a flying knee. You know, it happens. Part of the game, it get, you know, people get caught. But what were your right. what were your overall thoughts on on the performance and the fight itself? I'm obviously really frustrated. I felt really good at that fight. I felt uh, I felt like I was in control, and then uh, I made the mistake at the end uh, when I shot for that takedown. The distance was uh, wasn't correct, and uh, the penetration step wasn't correct. That he took advantage of that. So good on him. It, I mean, it was um, you. You were really taking it to him. It seemed like the plan was to pressure him and and never really give him an opportunity to set his feet. Do you feel like you were you were doing a, a relatively good job at that up until the fight ended? Yeah, that, I mean, that's pretty much uh, how I try to fight normally. I'm a pressure fighter, so I didn't feel like I was doing anything out of the ordinary. It's just. Uh, and you know, I, I feel my striking is 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 the best in the division. So I, it, it just that that was that was the game plan. It was just to go fight the way I normally fight, and I normally go for takedowns. And it's part of my game. So okay, so yeah, it, it was a devastating loss, uh, a serious injury. Uh, how long does it take to to bounce back from something like that? Well, you know. Uh, Obviously, we, we went to the doctor, checked everything out. Nothing was wrong. There wasn't any uh, serious complications, but you know, with, with, with things like that, sometimes the MRI doesn't show. So we just took a long time off. I, I did spar for a while, folks on only grappling and made it, things like that, and helping out my teammates. And then uh, I jumped back into the mix uh, after I felt I, I had taken enough time, the proper amount of time. How, how long would you say did you did you kind of stay on the sidelines a little bit before you actually got back in there? Uh, I want to say ninety days of those far. Oh wow, not long at all. Okay, now you know with there's all these recent CTE studies going on and like the brain injuries and all that. Does that worry you at all? You know, further down the line, the long term residual effects. For sure. I mean, that's that's why I want to be safe and, and, and do things the right way. But, you know, uh, a lot of the CTE stuff you see in football, and that's because of the, the constant collision. And these guys are doing it every week. And, and it's not like the running back is getting this problem or the quarterback. It's it's the guys in the front line, you know, that, that keep going and teach other. It's those guys. So I try to avoid that same problem where I'm, I'm basically going crazy every week. Uh, or twice a week, things like that. I try to be as smart as I can uh, with, with, uh, with being a defensive fighter, too, where I don't take as much punishment. Okay, fair enough. Now, UFC 216 in Las Vegas. You're headed there now. Your opponent, Evan Dunham, this dude's been around for a, a, a reasonable amount of time, and, you know, he's fought a lot of... Like, this guy, he fought Sean Shirk. You know, like, this, this is how long... This dude's been around. What are your thoughts on the matchup? Yeah, like you said, he's been around for a while. He's uh, he's definitely a veteran. Uh, I, th I think gritty is the good word to say. He's a gritty veteran, but 
that, that, I think that's where it where it ends, and uh, I, I think uh, I think I have the style, I have the game uh, to to shut him down and shut him down quickly. I don't I don't think uh, I don't think his experience alone is going to be enough to separate us as far as skill goes. He has gotten really good about his counterboxing as of late, and he's one to really throw at least three punches in his combos. So he's he's coming with three, four, five punch combos. But uh, you know he he's he's in these dog fights. He's tough as nails. But do you see? Do you think he has any legit path to victory? Yeah, anybody with a heartbeat has a path to victory. All it takes is one right punch on the chin, and, and things change. You know, similar to my last fight, I felt like I was completely done. So this fight, that's not gonna happen. I'm gonna I'm gonna take out every option. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna take out every uh, every corner, every, everywhere he can go. I'm gonna shut it down, and then I'm gonna finish this fight. So uh, there will be no path to victory uh, uh, when I uh, shut out every path. There's always a path until you shut it down. Fair enough. Fair enough. Now, how is training camp going for this? Of course, you're at King's MMA. Training's been great. I've had Arthur and uh, Arthur Estrazulis and Giga Chikatsa. Uh, Arthur is, uh, is, is is one of the guys we've had in, in the gym for a long time. He's fought for LFA, ACB. He's, uh, I think he's going to be the next guy. Uh, him and Giga are going to be the next guys into the UFC. Giga is working on it right, right now. He fights for glory. He, he's thinking about moving into uh, the Tuesday night contender series. Uh, and then from there to uh, UFC. But these have been my training partners. And these guys are just animals. Has Giga changed his nickname to the People's Champion yet? To the people, <laughs> I gotta talk to him about that, man. Uh, he like he likes the name. He, uh, <laughs> he likes it, so maybe. But uh, he's got too many nicknames. That's the uh, that's the problem. Some people call him Giga Kick. Some people call him Giga, uh, Giga Bite. They got some lame nicknames, and some good ones, but there's too many out there. Yeah, yeah, that is a lot. But Gigabyte's good. That's clever. That's definitely clever. Yeah, that is clever. <laughs> I don't know. I love it. Fair enough, fair enough. Now, one of your former training partners, Rafael Dos Anjos, he moved up to welterweight and is finding success. He just absolutely ran through Neil Magny. Do you still keep in contact with him at all? I do. We, we talk often, actually. Uh Man, he looked great. I was really happy. I was really happy to see uh, to him do so well. And uh, man, it, it was so fun to watch that fight. It was uh, it's just watching him do what he does. It, I felt like I was seeing the old Hoffa, the Hoffa that fought Andy Pettis and, and things like that. The one he was making his way up. I felt his last couple of fights with the weight cut, he was really uh, having a hard time performing the way he should. You think he'll get back to a championship fight at 170? For sure, for sure. I think uh, he might even get a he might even get there after the next fight. I don't know who, who they're gonna put in front of him, but if he if he shows another performance like that, give him a title shot. You know? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Well, your fight, Evan Dunham. How do you see that one playing out? Do you, you think it's gonna go the distance, or you think you'll? Get him out of there. He's he's like he's one of the guys who you know he's he's he wins a lot of decisions. You're a guy who you don't. I don't think you've ever lost a decision. So how do you exactly see this playing out? I think that it's like you said. It's uh, he's a guy who's looking to you know turn the corner every chance he gets, uh, make the move, uh, just get those points and move things like that. Uh, I'm going to take out all the ropes. I'm going to block him everywhere he goes. And uh, I'm going to put so much pressure on this guy. I'm going to shut him down. It's 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 not going to go to a decision. And uh, I'm going to break this guy. That's, that's my plan. Uh, I'm not looking to lose twice. I'm looking to finish. Now, who are some of your sponsors or people that are helping you out get ready for this fight? Ah, oh, man, my teammate and my family. These are the people that always help me. I don't have any sponsors outside of that, but I'm, I'm grateful for uh, my teammates and family. That's all the help I need. And most importantly, I have God. That, that's what matters. Absolutely, absolutely. Now, what are your social media outlets for the one or two people that are not already following you? How can they get a hold of you? Um, 
Uh, all my social media outlets, I got Twitter, Facebook, uh, Instagram, and it's all Ben Il Dariush. You know, I have a unique name, not to be people, uh, people have that name. So if you can spell my name, you'll find me, Ben Il Dariush, that easy. I dig it, I dig it. Well, Benil Darius, thank you so much for taking out the time. UFC 216, you're on your way there. Evan Dunham in your crosshairs. Best of luck to you, sir. Pleasure. Take care, brother. So there you have it. The UFC's number 12 lightweight, Benil Darius. He is en route to UFC 216 that's going down on October 7th. Go check that out. In the meantime, you can read me over at bloodyelbow.com. You can follow me on Twitter at the Eddie Mercado. If you like this interview, and I know you did, you can subscribe to my channel right here. Subscribe to Bloody Elbow's YouTube channel right there. Check out these interviews over here. Now go be a good person.